Okay. Howdy, everybody. Uh, beautiful day. Seagull North here. Getting uh, close to going home time. Really is. 40 days, actually, man. Let's see. I don't know what they say. What it is today? Today is the. Oh, come on. I don't care. The 20th. This will probably be the 21st or the 21th by the time I get it on there. Do it tonight when it's late because it takes a long time for this thing to load. And our uh, service up here sucks. So a lot of times you'd be about halfway through loading and blink, the service goes away. Anyway, I got only one old Bruce Nix. I got a guy, Bruce Nix, down in South. He uh, sent me a text. I wonder what I got. Let me see here. Messaging. New message. Text message. I don't want that. I don't guess I know how to run my phone. Recent calls. Let's see. Missed. Oh, I give up. <laughs> if you have a telephone, you really ought to know how to run the dang thing. But I don't. And Bruce texted me. And he is not that way. I'm sure he's in there somewhere. But uh, I remember for the longest time I had one of these phones. And it it was a big old fat thing. And it had a part that slid over. And there was a keyboard in there. My wife still got one like it. And I guess in today's electronic world, it's really pretty antiquated. But you try and answer that thing. It's ringing, ringing, ringing. You punching bells and buttons and symbols and crap. Can't answer it. Won't, won't happen. I don't, know. I don't know. This one here rings. Hey, hello. You know, that works. Uh, I remember I had that other one, which is a much more expensive phone than this one. And I go down to Verizon, and I was so sick of not being able to answer my phone. Just really ticked me off every time it rang I was by the time you know it by the time I managed to if I managed to get anything you know they quit trying hey, I went down to Verizon and uh, I said I want I'll swap this phone for a cheaper one I want one all I gotta do is open it up like that hello it works nothing special just they said, well, gee whiz, Mr. Siegel, you're due for an update. Oh, good, really? Hey, that's great. Now, when somebody, when you go in and you've got a very expensive phone and you want a cheaper phone, and somebody says, you're due for an update, well, you assume, what they're saying is, phone ain't going to cost you little or nothing. You know, they, they're going to put a phone on you. The update they were talking about was a hundred bucks for this thing. I think it was 78 something and by the time they got finished twirling figures I know I paid right out a hundred dollars for this silly thing. Uh, due to the fact that it's done and in the past I'm glad I did because this is even though I don't know how to get uh, Bruce Nix's text out of here uh, it's a whole lot simpler phone to use. I mean it's it's a peach and I uh, I like it but the update cost me a hundred bucks. Anyway, Ma and I went today to Jamestown and had some New York pizza. I'm telling you, these guys know how to make pizza. They really do. It's different. Uh, New York pizza, most of the time, is thin crust. Now, I hate to say it, but down at Seagull South in the Big Star, if you get a pizza that's thin crust and you pick it up, it stands out like a, like a shingle. I mean, it's solid. The crust is rigid. It's like a tablet back. These, 
here in Sealand or any Empire State. You pick it up and think sags and then cheese is running, you know, and it's a, you, know, you got it's a two hand to eat the thing. And boy, is it good, golly, Ned. This guy, I want to say, uh, any uh, constituents that I relate could be totally erroneous, but cumin, of course, tomatoes, all kind of stuff. It crunches up in there and mixes up in that sauce. Oh, boy, I mean to tell you, it has a, uh, when you bite into it, it has, you know, a pizza taste. But then, two or three seconds into the first munch, there's kind of a sweet tart that comes with. Boy, I'm telling you, oh, just great. We oh, yeah, had that, that was lunch today. And it was good. Piece of pizza thing was like this. I mean, you know, pick it up like that. <laughs> I'm not sure with my dialysis that I'm supposed to, you know, part of my uh, uh, menu, but uh, boy, it was good. I loved it. And then, yes, we had, we had a thing called cannoli. Many of you people ever watched the motion picture of Godfather? There was one scene where he was sending out one of his heavies to kill, kill somebody. And, uh, they uh, showed the guy getting in the car to go out and do the deed, and his wife yells out of the house, Don't forget the cannoli. Good, good. That's wonderful. I, I get, I, shut the window! I guess, I guess when, uh, when you're going to go kill somebody, ain't nothing like getting the cannoli. This is a cannoli. Yes, sir. And it's good. I have no idea what's in there. It's uh, chocolate chip. I think it's dark chocolate. I'm usually not nuts about dark chocolate, but it's uh, dark chocolate. Got that white stuff. Not runny, let's see. And then it's got a roll around it. Good. You ever get the opportunity, if you haven't eaten cannoli and you get the opportunity to get some really good cannoli, eat it. Good stuff. I have a little trouble around here, you know, and I do this at a home. I go in my studio room, my radio room, I close the door, the whole world's shut out. Here the world is here with me. And uh, this thing has, has good ears on it. It has an ear like a human being. And a noise in the background, it hears it. I'll be sitting here spinning my yarn, pontificating, and other things come right in with me. So that's why from time to time you hear me yell, you know, kind of, uh, I'm doing my thing, give me a break. Anyway. I had a opinionated thing here, if I can find it. Where'd it go? Hmm. I just also had a mosquito in my ear. If you're watching, Ike, that was a skeeter. That was a York State skeeter right there, because when he flew off, I heard him. Hmm. What have I done here? I had an opinion that I wanted to relate to you. Get away, that's a mosquito. We don't have mosquitoes around here. This one is eating me up. I gotta get this done before, before they do. Get off of there, mosquito. Anyway, what it is about loan sharking down in Texas, they've got ads on TV radio down in Texas and uh, they got these poor fools if they uh, run short of money at the end of the month you get two or three thousand dollars worth of bills they're gonna shut the electricity off you're gonna repo the car everything's going to hell in a handbasket 
Well, they've got places in Texas that they advertise these big, shy, smiling faces, you know. If you've got a, if you've got a car title or the title to your house, just bring it down. And we'll give you this form. And you sign on the line on the form. And we'll give you $10,000. Generous of them. Except that... Uh, if you didn't have the money for the things that you needed in the first place, the money that they give you is just going to be an added burden. And the odds are that you're not going to have the money to pay that pay back. You know, that in addition to what your original bills were. So, what happens is they take your house, they take your car, they take your waste basket, whatever it is that uh, you uh, gave them, they come get it. And that's loan sharking. They, uh, they shouldn't be allowed to do it, but uh, my uh, wonderful governor and the uh, good Republicans down there in the state of Texas think they let them do it. So it shouldn't happen. I'm going to skip to my story. Boy, if I can keep these skeeters off of me, these are, uh, I must have imported some of Ike's uh, East Texas skeeters up here because they're, they're getting after me. I'll just get a little breeze here, kind of blow them suckers through. Anyway. My uh, roommate and I, all those years ago that I talk about in the military, I had a roommate, wasn't Leonard, it was a guy named Keith, Keith Eckbert, Keith's dead now. But uh, Keith and I lived together four years. And uh, one night, we're uh, in the barracks. I remember I had a white 61 Volvo PV 544, two side draft carburetors, four speed. It was a rock. It was the car that took me to Texas, and it was it was a good looking little car in its day. You know, usually uh, the ladies liked it. They thought it was cute. It was fast. So uh, we go trucking off to town in my little Volvo, and uh, as I related before, we didn't have much luck. You know, we're in cruising town and up down the street going to the various drive-ins and whatnot. And we're going down what was North First. South First, North First. Don't guess it matters at this point. And Keith says, pull over, pull over, man, I know her. <laughs> I know her. So pull over the curb. And sure as all get out, he did know her. She came over to the window. Hi there, yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know, the door's open. Him and her in the back seat. Keith says, go to Anson. Anson's about 20 miles north of uh, Abilene. Nothing out there is very close together. So about 1 o'clock in the morning, we gin off up, go to Anson. Takes us out 30, 40 minutes to get up there. She tells me how to get to her house. We pull up in the driveway. Keith and her go out and go to the house. I'm sitting there, duh, what will I do now? Oh, well. I'll just drive around dancing, see what this place looks like. So I, I do. I'm easing around, you know. I go, down. I go to what would be downtown, uh, three, four, five stores, and I'm kind of a main drag, and I'm cruising, going around, you know. I do this for about 20 minutes, and as you gotta know, pretty soon I look up in the mirror and the lights are going blink, 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 blink. blink. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm certainly not speeding. Pull over, stop the car. You guys remember Buford Pre Justice from uh, Smokey and the Jack Bandits? This cat was like him. Comes up, get out of the car, holding his cannon pointed at me. Yeah, sure. Get out of the car, assume the position. I'm up against the car. Frisking me, kicking my feet apart, almost knocking me down. And he says, he says uh, why are you casing the Safeway store? I wasn't casing the Safeway store. I just, I was just driving around. What are you doing in my town? Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, my, 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 my buddy, uh, my, my roommate, is, uh, he's, he's, he's across town with, with a friend. He says, take me there. Well, under the circumstance, I remember uh, he, uh, before he did that, he was kicking my feet, 
He says, I'm going to take you down and lock you up for 72 hours on suspicion. I said, suspicion of what? He says, any damn thing I want to. <laughs> okay, it's your town. At that juncture, then, you know, what are you doing? Hot stuff. Well, I'm here, you know, I'm just, just biding my time. My, my, uh, my buddy's over at my girl's house. You know, just, just take me there. Okay. I get my Volvo. He gets in behind me. We do a few streets. Oh, I might have been lost. It took me a while to find a place. Got back to it. Evidently, Anson, Texas, got a hell of a tax basis because when I got there, there were three patrol cars. I mean, the house was lit up like the fire rescue squad. Lights flashing. I mean, the yard's all lit up. So I get out of my little Volvo and I'm standing there with this cop. <laughs> And the house is just you know, glows a little white, just illuminated. And I see this face looking out through the mirror, uh, curtains. It's Keith. <laughs> I walk up. What's going on, man? <laughs> I said, well, I said, you're going to have to come out of there. We're going to jail. <laughs> he says, what? What has happened? I said, well, you know, I'll try to explain it to you. Just, just, just come out. Well, he did. And uh, after a fashion, the cop finally decided it was just a bunch of young foolishness, you know. And uh, he let us go. But I still see Keith's face. I mean, man, it, it looked like any movie you ever saw. Just everything lit up. Light, lights. They didn't have uh, LED lights in those days. They had the rotating, you know. <laughs> I mean, there were neighbors standing on their front porch. You talk about, excuse me, screwing up her uh, reputation. And Keith looking out the window. Anyway, we got back in our little car and they escorted us to the south edge of Anson and we went back to Abilene never to uh, go to Anson and trouble the uh, local constabulary again. Once again we got out of it. These stories that I've told you actually if I, you know, I'd be a, I'd be a long-term prison uh, you know person if, if we hadn't gotten out of some of them but uh, anyway that's the story of uh, Keith and my roomie and me and our experience with uh, aunts in Texas, him and his, uh, she wasn't really a girlfriend, he was just an acquaintance. Must have been a very friendly acquaintance, but uh, anywho, that cop says, I am gonna take you down and lock you up for 72 hours on suspicion. Said, suspicion of what? He says, any damn thing I want to. He didn't, and I got away with him. Nothing really. Got away with just driving around the rock. But uh, that was the, that's the story. I, uh, I think they ought to shut down the uh, loan sharking businesses in Texas. I have to assume that cop's probably dead by now. That's 50 years ago and he was 40 or 50 years old. So yeah, if he ain't dead, he, he probably not a cop anymore. You know, I sweat him, but. Uh, they've got anything in Anson, Texas uh, remotely approaching the efficiency of that old boy. If you go to Anson, be good. Because they dang well will lock you up for 72 hours on suspicion. Anyway, that should do it. I've enjoyed it. Took me a little while to get this one done. Uh, I want to say hi to my friends. I found a list. I got Crystal and Brian and Oh, by the way, Jim Kersey. I'm uh, hearing, uh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing about you. I won't say what. It's really nobody's business. But uh, give me a call. Also, your your cousin there. I want to talk to somebody. I want to ride and gun club and talk to him. He's a nice place he's got there. But as I went by, of course, to go out, you got to go past Gales. Got that white Lincoln sitting out there with those airbags flat on the front end of it. Need to write her a check. Let her fix them airbags. That's unsightly. <laughs> Should cost you more than 500, maybe $1,000.
You're rich. <laughs> Help her out, guy. Anyway, Brian, Cooter, you have a final. Hope everything's all right down home. We'll, uh, we'll be there shortly. Crystal, if you're watching, uh, save me a seat, for God's sake. My son Kyle and Carl. Kyle is uh, in the Lone Star now, driving his mama's car, I understand. Tracy, you've seen the pictures. Boy, you were, you you did good. Heights and Raider. Uh, I hope if you were over at uh, Chautauqua, things went well for you. I'm sure they did. You're pretty literate. Ike, let your hair grow. And uh, in case you think we ain't got skiers, I've probably got something welled up on my hair here. Just uh, look like a bee sting. But uh, a while ago, you probably noticed that I was waving and flagging them little beggars. Ah, uh, what we got? Glenn. Yeah. I don't know if Glenn ever watches this, but Daryl Mackey called uh, David. He David's doing pretty good. I stopped and spent a couple hours with him. His wife's pretty sick, but uh, he, you know, he's doing good. Tyler, if you ever see it, top today. Once again, Jim Kersey, give me a call. Let me, uh, give me a little more insights of what's going on with you. Anyway. I enjoyed it as always. And there's my buddy. Just a minute.